blood and thunder lightning! Mint 2 is one of the most unique video games when it comes to visual in the late 90s. It's a real-time tactic where there are simplistic background setting when it comes to the trees, the grass, rough rock, edges off the mountainside, little pebbles, etc. as you can closely examine as you play through the game. The early PC dimension with hints of 3D module was the beginning of a new era for video game industry. We're not too long before when Halo was released afterwards, but keep in mind at the time during 1998, our gaming industry was a too popular or friendly consumer to the majority of the customer compared to the expensive gaming consoles such as PlayStation or Xbox. Halo came out in 2001, three years after Min 2 early 3D module, and the short time of video game visual evolution was not far too apart, but pretty damn impressive when it comes to this game on a PC platform for a real-time tactic. The characters are impressively astounding for 90s graphic design, as you play them through the battlefield at zoomed out scale level, however, if you zoomed in max, Somehow it can be frustrating not be able to see the crystal clear faces or customs around them. It's the pixel blur can be visually challenging. Regardless of modern mods from Magma Project or Tang Codex website, it was not an option at the time when it came to the 90s PC technology to embrace an immersive experience. Despite of the limited graphic design, trust me, you have no idea how grateful I am for the amazing well detailed colorful artwork in the upper left hand corner of the screen during the battles. The more exciting part is hands down to the art team of this game. You can distinguish the color of each military unit for an example. Which is my favorite, as I am having eye-gasm from these berserk warriors. There are red, blue, green, and other hints of color. They are very colorful as it lines up the dark, grimy battlefield with hints of rainbow, which oddly, it gave me a little comfort for them to survive each mission with hope. The artwork design for each soldier class are something that we need to discuss about. First off, we have the warrior class, which I will admit is a little dull and effy. I was confused at the time, and I am still am having a hard time comprehending the visual of these warrior units to this day. What the hell is even that? For an example, I do know that they're wearing these war garments over the chainmail armor that the cutscene has a better way to express its visual for the gaming audience. However, during the real-time tactic battle, the abstracts of these bunch of dudes are wearing these grandma bikini with this shitty poopy color of gray, brown, cockroach color. It threw me off so many times, and I am still dumb founded to this day as a 25 year old man almost 26 since my birthday is in a few days but i do admire the bulkiness of the shield somehow the chemistry releases in my brain where i am convinced that there are a large group of warriors hurling up together with their shields i felt safer until the later brutal levels. Nothing is very distinctive about them besides the background color of the face portrait. When I was a kid playing this game, and there was this level where we had to assassinate the Lord Baron in his castle. They had these badass warriors, such as the bowmen, except they were wearing these black outfits. Aesthetically wise, I was super jealous that I couldn't play them through the campaign until later on. There's a mod from Project Magma where there's an evil campaign can be played. That's another story for another time. But man, sure I do did these epic mustache. I mean, look at it. They could be carrying a large ass comb in their pocket during the journey and one guy loses the comb and he asks the other guy, Hey, can I borrow your mustache comb? Sure, if you survive this mission, you'll say what? The dwarves are another simplistic unit, which is nothing ordinary, but they sure look like Scottish golfers about to have a hole in one with the enemy. I do like the color of a gentle green, reddish, and gray uniform, but they're nothing compared to the other dwarves from the franchise such as Warhammer or the Lord of the Rings. However, halfway through the game, holy shit, I fucking love the Dwarven Mortars. They have the inspiration of World War One trench helmets with these weapons that they look so unique and stand out from the majority of the classes. Next off, the famous class, the Journeyman, or perhaps, you know, the visual design has many characteristics to their robe, the shovel, weapon, etc. It's like I am reading a story behind it, each of these Journeymen. For the battle perspective, it does look like they're badass at all, but some Native American grandpa just smoking his damn pipe. At first, when I played this game, I was like, what the hell is this looking garbage unit? God, I hope I don't play them forever into the game. I hated them so much as they were my least visual artwork design. Boy, was I wrong later on halfway through the game. When King Alfred was Christian as an emperor, the journeyman stripped down butt naked and redressed himself with these cooler gears, swords, these little flags behind the shoulder. I said to myself, I am so, so sorry that I literally treat you like a piece of garbage, even though you didn't look like a garbage. Wait, what? 
You're literally like the coolest thing I have ever seen in this game. Please forgive me. It was true. I just couldn't stop admiring the visual. I was having eye gasm all over again. The visual was pretty impressive for 1998, especially the enemy units. Look, I can ramble on, on and on for hours for each unit, but I'll summarize overall, where they have the Goss, the Fetch, the Meyer, the Maul, the terrifying Macurdia, especially the giant version. Holy shit! The floating, soulless, badass, stinking knight, thrall white. And my personal favorite is the famous enemy unit, the goal, which actually worked for the visual in this early 3D environment. The combat can be clumpy at some time, but the glorious battle blood gushing out of the enemy as they're hacking and slicing each other. The bombs gloriously exploded, and the ground shake with the tremble of an earthquake as the battle tremble back and forth with the power of these units and the enemies. Good lord, there are tons of ray ray blood 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 everywhere. This game doesn't shy away from gore and gruesome, which is why it was rated M for Mature. The graphic plays one of the biggest roles for success for a Bungie franchise, specifically for this game, Mint 2 Soul Blader. The world map can be visually confusing at some time, when you can be lost to find where you need to go off course into random ambushes, where the look of the enemy slowly appearing into your camera can be nerve wracking and terrifying for the first time playing this game. Visual can be a challenging obstacle course for Bungie Company to develop this game from the standpoint of view, but it was breakthrough discover of the next generation for a video game industry. For cutscene, long story short from Myth the Fallen Lord, the first game that was released before the sequel. The animation was atrocious and eye-burning, but satire humor. What do I mean by that? Well, think real hard and tell me what this animation style reminds you of. Exactly, Disney cartoon inspiration from the 90s, except it has blood, gore, and other stuff that you never thought you would see in Disney animation style. It's like you're taking your kids to go see a sausage party movie in the theater, and hear all these parents screaming in this pitch black cinema, protecting their children from the eye sizzling movie screen of a hot dog sliding through the bun. However, Myth 2 seriously took the feedbacks from the fan base, and instead of fixing their mistakes, they decided to add an update version layer on top of the shitty, old, cringy, cartoonish animation that the low-budget film were meant for. The animation studio transferred to a Japanese company, Anime International, where there are more experienced folks to perform and deliver the true strike into the heart of this video game to capture the audience's heart and throw them into a more realistic realm of emotion and seriousness. Instead of this weird Disney style with grimy mood tone, they went fucking up straight to the berserk anime, which I am very happy and pleased with them. But by far, my favorite visual aspect of this game is the journal scene that rolled the film right before each battle began. The journal expresses the imageries of these live action journeys and captured these powerful moments. I felt like I was actually there experiencing the pain of the long ass journey. Thirst for water, dying for rest to sleep at peace, hearing the news from the mock as the cities have fallen. So many emotion of fear, anguish, nerve wracking, of fingernails chewing, knowing that my veteran units may die and never seen again from the powerful foe of Damas. Unfortunately, the days of victory and success were short-lived for Bungie and Mint 2. Everybody loves music, right? Well, I got some bad news for you. And good news. Done. Let's start with the bad news first. Unfortunately, during each mission, there are no music at all. Not even their own customized soundtrack. Yes. Like up, young man. Such as iconic games, Super Mario. Now, for the narration of the soldier's journal. One of the most comforting in this game is the voice of the narrator. But our respite was cut short when the mayor beseeched us to investigate reports of grave robbing around the villages just north. Of Which I felt like I am wrapped up in this hollow bubble and I can just listen to him rambling on forever before I am tossed into this bloody battle. The music is very eerie and ominous. It can shift to produce the echo sound of the battle and marching aggression of the enemy, which it can be high and low, depending on the location and what's happening now. As the voice of a narrator is so deep and grimy, it is a perfect tone for this dark hopeless game. It can be bold too as well. The tone nails perfectly as a ship from the slow somber music to the enemy that are coming with fast and aggressive marching sound of death is coming for you. Nevertheless, there are toggle sounds which it can be a little satisfying when the soldiers are hacking their enemy and Make a hole. 
this huge engaged combat where it can be bloody sound to the mind of as a gamer. One sound can be a little scary where your heart drop for a second when you hear the arrow whistling launching from the soulless units. I'm clear. as you're trying to safely protect your groups of unit from point A to B without getting them hurt. The sound production is something very useful for the awareness in the combat, but can be very stressful as well. <laughs> Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Small moments of the conversation are pleasing to my ears, but not a lot of dialogues is this happening between the combat, which is something I am not worrying to complain about. Nothing you can do for him. He's dead, Garrick. Your Majesty, Your Majesty! Those beasts, they're unstoppable. We haven't a prayer. Instead, it is a perfectly balanced to me since it's a real time tactic. I love the part where the healers begin to mend the wounds of the analyze. It's a sound that I cannot be any happier to hear than anything else. Ah. Beside, of course, the famous victory cheer at the end. Where the men were clanking their swords onto the shield, the dwarves are cackling with high level of testosterone, and the archers are kind of like pirates as they found their booty chests at the end. Yay! Yay! Yeah. Hooray! All right! Sweet. The sound design from Nin 2 Soulblighter is one of the biggest weaknesses to the franchise of Bungie. Why? Think about it for a second. The Lord of the Rings is one of the greatest fantasy of all time when it comes to novel, film, and video game ever being produced, where Hyrule Shore, the legendary Canadian composer, developed endless music for countless scenes. The same for Elder Scroll V of Skyrim, the Dragonborn song is just beyond captivating. Nim 2 is the fantasy game where they need to develop their own special formula. Can you invest in more money in the sound department where the music can portray the story, which is very crucial for the fandom, and new corners to the franchise? If they they had done it successfully, boy, just imagine where this game would be today. Potentially a remaster, perhaps. Now, I do have a confession to make. I could have explained further into the video, elaborating the game mechanic from each unit and the story from the beginning to end, but I decided not to because there is a better YouTuber than me. His name is Mandalore Gaming, where his Mint 2 content has over 44 minutes worth of goodies. He can explain the mechanic and the campaign wise better compared to me. Please feel free to check it out and support his channel. I will cut to the chase and give this game a final score. 9 out of 10 with a badass seal approval. It would have been a perfect score if they added more dialogues to each mission and sugarcoated a song behind it as well during the real time battle. Last reason maybe a huge ask by an evil legit campaign would have been very cool as a what if scenario just like the lord of the Rings battle for the middle earth video game mint 2 is one of these rare real-time tactics that you don't really get to see these days during the modern gaming it's a long time forgotten masterpiece i really hope you enjoyed this video and don't forget to hit the bell for notification and subscribe below i'll see you guys next time get me greek out <laughs>